Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel. So today is an exciting day of teaching and showing you techniques, what to do, what not to do when it comes to your makeup over 40, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I'm so passionate about you doing the proper techniques, using the right tools that this is going to be a huge game changer for you. Are you ready? Let's get this beauty started. So I'm going to put my hair back so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And I really am excited about this video because I like to really check in with you and do a makeup tutorial where I'm really teaching you. I do teach you in all of my videos, but when I really dive in deep and really call things out so you really know why I'm doing them and not kind of just breezing over them. So my brushes are not as clean as I want them to be, but we'll, we'll work with them. It's fine. This could happen to you. Not a problem. You don't have to wash them every single day. A lot of you ask me questions about how I wash my brushes. I have a cinema secrets came from Sephora. I bought it there. The top actually has this kind of texture on it. So it is a coconut, solid coconut, kind of like a balm. And I just wash my brushes with that. And it depends on how dirty they are. Sometimes you want to use a spritz cleanser. So you're not always washing your brushes, but I really like this gentle one that I found from cinema secrets at Sephora. I was really impressed that they have it. You can travel with it. It's easy. I like the textured top. So that's how I clean my brushes, but I haven't done it. <laughs> I'm a little struggling right now, but all right. So first and foremost, we're going to prep the skin. That is your first tip ladies. If you want to have your makeup really work for you. You're going to be prepping your skin, working with your skin, being consistent with your skin. As an esthetician, I've seen women from all ages and all levels of taking care of their skin. So even if you're 75, 85, 95, sitting here watching me saying, oh, well, I've only used soap or it's too late for me or what have you. No, it's not. Your skin is your largest organ. So I want you to get up and I want you to go to the drugstore and get a really beautiful cleanser and a moisturizer. Again, you don't have to spend tons of money, but what you do need to do is stop using soap. It's too alkaline. It's going to strip the skin, leave a waxy film on your skin. Then you start seeing milia, you know, those white little bumps that are hard and you have to go to the dermatologist to have excised. So we don't want to do that. It's never too late to do anything, especially on my channel, ladies. So infuse yourself with excitement and positivity about your skin, no matter what level you are with your skin right now. I'm gonna go in with my Ever Quench. This is a hydrating booster. My skin feels just dry. It's summer, it's been a little dry, and I'm going to infuse it with this beautiful clean beauty. I love how it just like soaks into my skin. I've been using Ever for seven years now. I started in my treatment room, and um, I wanted something easy for my clients to be able to buy, put on auto ship, and I've had it ever since, and I love whether it's this or it's the rich cream, it just depends on what my skin's doing. Ever quench is into my skin, so you can see that it's much, much more hydrated. I'm gonna go in with an eye balm. I featured this on my channel for women over 60. They were raving about this for my research. So this is Kaiser Weiss. This is a beautiful eye balm. And if you are struggling with lots of dehydration on this end, here on the end of your eyes in this like crow's feet area, enrich it, infuse it with a balm. Maybe the, the gel, the cream's not working for you. Maybe it's not penetrating your skin. I love balms. You know, I love cleansing balms, the Elemis Rose Balm. I use balms, I use oils. I try to put as much hydration into my skin and I am more normal oily combination. All of the three put together. Oil attracts oil, ladies. You can put oil on your skin. You really want to just infuse your skin as much as you can to be extra hydrated. I'm going in with Avene. This is a French skincare line. I recently featured the thermal water when I sprayed it on my skin and they sent me um, a little gift. They saw that on Instagram. They sent me a little gift. It's fragrance-free, oil-free like my La Roche-Posay, but it is their mineral sunscreen, 12% zinc oxide. You shake it up. You know I love serums. These companies know exactly what I like. So you can see I only do four drops though, because it is different than the La Roche-Posay. This is a little bit thinner, but you don't need much. It's not like a cream, like it's not like a moisturizer that the La Roche-Posay is. So I have to kind of work this in a little bit more, but you can see I'm gonna get this beautiful shield on my skin. Sunscreen is on. I really love how my skin feels and how it looks. Let's just talk about first your makeup brushes. This is why I created my essential makeup brush kit for you, because it was essential. 
So when people would come into my studio for a makeup lesson, they would have a million brushes or they would have no brushes or they have like one brush or they would have like these little brushes that came with their eyeshadow. And I was like, okay, I need to design. I need to create these brushes for my clients that are coming in. And that's really where this came from. So I designed the essential makeup brush kit for you. Now it is 10 brushes. I'm really excited about it because we have a dual ended brush here. This is the concealer brush. And then we have a lip brush on the other end. So this was a really nice addition to my essential makeup brush kit, but don't fight your makeup ladies. Just work with brushes that work for you. Like you don't want to be like looking for an eyeshadow brush and find like this little tiny thing that you can't even like put on, or you can't even like really see when you're in the mirror. So that's what we do. I'm going to be using the Charlotte Tilbury. This is a khaki palette. It's called the rebel. I'm such a rebel here on the channel because I'm, I'm so outside of like the normal YouTube person teaching you how to do a facelift with minimal makeup ladies. Cause all I saw was so much makeup and I wanted you to feel that you don't have to wear a ton of makeup. So I'm going to use my eyeshadow brush. I'm going to go into the eyeshadow. Now the way I teach you how to put on eyeshadow is that you want to intentionally press the brush into the palette like this, pressing it in. I know it sounds silly, but the majority of the women that came in would press down like this tip, 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 this is what they would do. It was like dancing around on the eyeshadow. And then they would go and they would just sweep, sweep, sweep. And there was like no color. There was like nothing happening. So I was like, okay, this is something that I really want to pay attention to. So you press into your shadow, you're picking up enough shadow, and then you're going to go to the actual lid. Now that would be probably your normal step, right? After you prepped your skin, maybe you do your foundation and concealer. There's a reason why I'm not doing that because I do not want to disrupt my beautiful makeup with eyeshadow falling down, having any issues, mascara. Oops. Oh no, I got to clean up. No clean face eyes first, but you might have just gone from clean face and then to the eyeshadow, but no, first we want to prime the eyes with the eye primer. There's a reason why we do this. Look how discolored. So my eyelids are discolored and then I go into a color that's like a khaki. I'm going to be creating another color. So I have like discoloration, khaki, and a third color. It's going to just muddy it all up and it's not going to look beautiful and it's not going to look true. That's why we go in with the eye primer first. It's a cream to powder finish. Go to the base of the eyes. It is a light medium. This is like a universal color because I just need to pull out. It's like a color corrector. I need to pull out that darkness that's in the eye area and make it lighter. And this is going to allow your eyeshadow to last all day. Eyeshadow primer is done. Look, beautiful neutral eyelids. That's exactly what you want, ladies. You want to start off with having, you know, you want to make a facelift, right? You can't get that if you have dark eyelids or purple eyelids or red eyelids. We want to neutralize them out. Then we're going to go in with our beautiful color. I'm just, you know, I wanted something a little bit different. So what we want to do is we want to press the eye shadow into the eye area. I used a darker color because I want you to see it on camera. I don't want to be all light and natural and then be like, wait, where is her eye shadow? So I'm going to just press it in and I'm just using this middle area here because I will sweep across with our basically a, a blending brush. So I will blend it. This is really nice because you can nicely blend the eyeshadow and not use that much. Now, this is what's really important. Since we don't have any makeup on our face here, we can take an all may pad, which is an eye makeup remover pad. It's an oil free. These are really, really great. I go like this and I take off any fallout. So if you have droopy eyes, if your eyes or your application is not as, and I'm going to just show you, let's do the same color over on this lid and say we got a little excited and we were like, you know what? We went a little bit further out. Let's show you. Or maybe say you were using a palette, had a lot of fallout and you weren't quite sure. And it went this way. You want to be able to clean this up. So you can see this eye here is going to be nice and crisp. We have nothing falling down. We're keeping it up. The second you allow your eyeshadow to come down and muddy up and you don't clean it up or, you know, you're like, well, it's went a little low, but I don't, it's fine. What have you? It'll drag down the eye. So you can see how this drags down the eye here. So if this happened to you and you had concealer and foundation on, now you're going to disrupt that. You're going to have to go back and patch it up and it never looks right. Never looks the same. So what you can do is if this happened to you and you said, oh no, I can't believe I went that far. Clean it up. Take all of that off the skin. So you're cleaning this up. You have a nice clean 
base. And then if you need to, you can go back in and patch this a little bit on the actual lid, depending on. Now let's just blend this out so it's the same as the other one. Again, too, when you're blending, you don't have to worry. You're like, okay, well, you know what? Maybe my eyeshadow might move a little bit. If it does, you can go back and you can easily clean that up. So let me just make sure that these two have the same amount of color on them because I know I went, I needed to get a little dramatic over here. This is where my little brush here that is a tapered smudge brush really comes in handy because this is like a pencil. This we're gonna go into, say we go into this darker color. It's definitely has a little bit of sheen to it. Might have a tiny bit of glitter. It's not matte, which I'm surprised about, but we're gonna go into this and we're going to want to keep this shadow lifted, okay? So if you're gonna create that contour, you're going to really try to keep this angle, like a little triangle on the end, but you're not coming far out. You're literally placing it. That's why brushes are so important. If you didn't have a brush that was pointed like this, you're not going to be able to precisely get right in here and give yourself that dimension, but also not go too far out because you want to lift. So when we contour up, you want the eye to come up. So when we work with color theory, the darkness is going to recede. So lightness basically reflects. So if you, you know, you want to highlight your brow bone, you're going to use a lighter color, maybe something that has a little sheen. When you want to create depth, you're going to be using a darker color like I am right now. So I'm kind of cheating a little bit closer. So we're going to lift the eye. We want this to be lifted here. So I'm going to concentrate on blending up here and coming down just in this outer corner. So that's going to give you a nice lift. You can always go back with the blending brush. If you say, oh, you know what? It looks like a little too much. Blend it out nice and soft. You're lifting that there. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other eye. So it's really right here where you're wanting to put that darkness to lift the eye area and then blend it nicely out. Another really great tip, ladies, is to never have demarcation levels when it comes to your eyeshadow, whether using one shadow, two shadow, three shadows. That's why a blending brush is so so important because you're going to be able to marry all of your colors or two of your colors and get that really beautiful diffused look, but simply you're not doing too much work. So Charlotte Tilbury has like this gold color for the brow bone color, if you will. I don't want to use that. So I'm going to just take out of my strong brew, just like a bone color. And I'm going to just give my brow bone area a little highlight. So I want to bring that out. So I'm not darkening up underneath this eyebrow. Yes, I have darker eyebrows and so it can look a little darker. So I need something that's going to be lighter underneath the brow bone. I'm gonna show you my eye technique when it comes to curling my lashes, getting them to stay all day. This is something that you can go back to, I think 2012, 2011, I had a video on my technique that I decided to create. So I'm going to go in with my mechanical eyelash curler first and I get right to the base. I pump a couple times and then I take it off. So now my lashes are going to be up. So this is my first step. Then I will take my heated eyelash curler. I will press on. So we have the heated eyelash curler with the green light, which is going to be on. And then I can move it to a medium or a high heat, which I'm going to keep it on here. So as that is doing its thing and heating up, I'm gonna go in with my dark chocolate waterproof eyeliner. This is my technique, ladies, that is going to be a big game changer for you when it comes to lining your eyes. So there's a couple different ways, depending on if you have really steady hands, if you don't have steady hands, or if you are wanting to outline your eyes, let them really be defined, but not age your eyes and make them look heavy. I do this all the time in my fierce aging with all my ladies from all different age groups. So this is a tried and true technique. So what I do is I go to the base of the lash. So you're going to be able to see right where I'm placing it. So you can see I'm almost like moving my lashes. So if it feels a little funny, you know that you're doing it right because you're going to be in the lashes. You want to thicken up that lash line. So that is going to be where you're going to put your, la your eyeliner and you get it right in there. So you can give yourself this nice definition. It looks amazing when you do it right and you taper down and you get that beautiful liner, you're going to have a different relationship with 
your eyeliner. Doing this technique, you're not going to be like, oh gosh, you look so heavy, or oh my gosh, this liquid liner is just not working anymore. So you're going to have a different relationship with your eyeliner, which you're gonna be thrilled because you're gonna say, oh my gosh, I never knew I could look so beautiful Why, by using my eyeliner. So this is what I'm doing. So you can see that it's on now. I like to drag a tiny bit down just to balance it out. It's almost just like a little shading. If you have shaky hands and you're like, well, Nicole, I can't, I can't even see. Like there's just no way I could be able to get like right in there. When you feel it, you're gonna have to go with your sense of feeling how it feels on your eyelid. And it's okay if it's all over the place because you're gonna take your short smudge brush. All my names are on the side of the brush. You're going to take the short smudge brush. I like to call my little eraser and you're gonna go and sweep across. So you can basically diffuse all of that jagged or up or down, or maybe you're just not, maybe just sometimes like me, I put a little bit higher there and I was like, not a big deal. I don't need to stress. I can go like this, lens it all out. And you have this really beautiful defined eye, as you can see compared to this. So it's nice as you're aging, you can tweak your eyeliner. You don't have to do liquid eyeliner that you've been doing for 20 years. It maybe doesn't work for your eyes anymore. As they change, as they get maybe a little bit, you know, more droopy or what have you, we can lift them. Speaking of lifting with the eye and droopy eyes. So you don't want to take your eyeliner all the way down where your eyelid goes. So if your eyes are drooping down, if you take your eyeliner and just keep following it down, it's going to close off the eye. It's literally going to close off half the eye, a tiny quarter. You don't want that. You want to stop shorter. So you're going to stop shorter on your lid. So it'll bring it up. Maybe you don't do anything on the bottom. You'll have to choose for your own eye shape. What's going to be best for you. So, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror. Okay, great. Ooh, wow. What a dramatic difference. Stopping a little bit short, smudging it up a little bit, making it look less harsh, but you're not going to have heaviness because you're not taking up a lot of real estate. This is the one thing that I would love for you to master is being able to put eyeliner on because I've seen so many YouTube channels of women over 50 telling you not to use eyeliner anymore. And I don't understand this concept as we're aging, we're getting lighter. We're getting less lashes. We need to define our features. So it's funny because my, I just think about my mom when she was like, I feel like I'm turning beige and I only see like nostrils in the mirror. Like I just don't see any definition. And that's because she's losing her eyebrows. She has very fine lashes and she needs to define. And the second she defines her eyes with a dark chocolate eyeliner is when she sees those beautiful blue eyes pop and her whole look comes together by doing something very simple. Again, I use dark chocolate. I use mauve. I use a blue that's beautiful, like a navy. I do not use black. Black is too harsh. It's going to now I say that with a caveat. If you have a black, tie event, you have an evening event and you want to wear black, by all means go for it. But during the day, just really trying to make your eyes look more open and lifted. It's much more forgiving to be using a dark chocolate. Eyeliner is on, on both eyes. We're going to go in with mascara and this is a great way to be able to lift the face with minimal makeup. Mascara is key. So if you didn't do any of my techniques that I just did and showed you, you want to be able to apply your mascara properly. You really get the benefit of using a mascara. Now you could go in with a primer, like I've showed you in my other videos, which is really nice. This is going to really accentuate and lengthen your eyes. It's a white quote unquote mascara. It's really a primer. Then you let it set for a second and then you go back over with your mascara. So we're going to go to the base of our lashes. That's what you want. You want a wand that grabs your lashes, doesn't just roll over them and not coat them. You're going to go to the base of your lash right at that mucosal line. You want to make sure you're getting every single lash. And I think that's a big mistake with women over 50 is that they do tips and they feel like, okay, that's enough. Afraid that they're going to clump up the lashes too much or what have you. You can use two different mascaras if you want to, if you're wanting to get certain volume, you could do a mixture of all different ways of doing your lashes, but going is called front loading to the base, pulling out and coming up. Now, let me see if I'm getting, no, I'm not good because this is my mascara. But when I was using the Chanel the other day, it like got all over my lid and that's never happened before. We have the mascara on now. Let it just set up for a second before you go into your heated eyelash curler. This is my little technique. So my eyelash curler has been on, my heated eyelash curler has been on. I'm gonna just test it and say, okay, perfect. It doesn't heat up Mac crazy daddy, right? It's just nice and warm and it's going to be able to 
give me that hairspray. This is what I kind of think as my hairspray. Mascara is on. I'm going to go to the base. I'm going to go slow. I'm going to now mold my lashes. Now remember, if it's not completely dry, you're going to get some of that mascara on the top here on your lid because you're pulling it back. So you want to make sure that it's semi dry, not super, super dry. And then I'm basically molding my lashes, telling them to stay up all day. This is how I do it. This is why I don't spend the time doing this in every video because I want to get to whatever my next step is. But this absolutely does work. I changed it from a battery to a USB. You have three different levels. It is such a wonderful product. I made it lightweight. I've mentioned that before because this is something that you're going to be sitting and doing for a second because you'll reap the rewards all day long of having your lashes up. So you don't want something that's gonna be heavy and chunky in your hand. So this is just a great beauty tool. Just turned off my heated eyelash curler. Lashes are up, they're going to stay up all day. I did clean up a little bit because I did have a little mascara once I start pushing them back and like really getting them up. It's very exciting. You'll be very excited when you start seeing your lashes kind of opening and looking beautiful. Now let's move into the brows real quick. And it's actually not a real quick kind of thing because brows are so important. Those are, are what's going to shape your face, add dimension to your face. So a lot of the ladies are missing laterally their brows, right? The lateral part of the brows is missing. So for me, I show you my fierce aging series with all my ladies, whether we have to use a brow stencil, whether I am having to really create a whole new brow. I did that as a permanent makeup artist. I literally created for alopecia patients, for cancer patients, for anyone that was really dealing with a brow issue. I would do strokes of hair with permanent makeup. It was one of my favorite things to do. It made such a dramatic difference. And I love the fact that it was permanent. Yes, you'd have to touch up every year or two, depending on your lifestyle, but it was so beautiful. So I am very, very, very into brows when it comes to helping women figure out how to shape them and what have you. So we talk a lot about where they're supposed to start, how they're supposed to arch and where they're going to end. So basically based off of your face shape and how you are structured. So it's going to differ for everybody. So I can just show you with me having brows on my ladies, we're going to basically start up again, hopefully in November, December with our fierce aging and having women back into the studio for me to be sharing their beauty with you. But until then, I'm going to show you if you are dealing with brows that basically missing half of them, or they start way far over, you have to either get a stencil to help you fill them in, but do not leave your brows and say, oh, it's too complicated. It takes me too long, or I just want to do it. You're missing out on framing your face and setting the whole tone to your makeup and literally lifting your face. The brows can give you an instant facelift, even if you were wearing no makeup. And I've proven this time and time again on my channel, in my treatment room, it's amazing. Right now we're going to just, I'm going to just take one of my skinny brow pencils. This is medium brown. It's a little dark, but we're not really filling in too much. But when you go to fill in your brows, you want to put the pencil straight up. So basically the outside of the nose, corner of the nose, right at the top. That's where you would start according to your bone structure, ball of the nose over the iris. This is where you would arch. So you break, make a little mark right there and then corner of the eye here. Now here's my biggest tip for you. You don't want to bring your brow all the way down further than your eye, right? So I would like to, and I see, say this a lot of my fierce aging, I stop a little bit shorter. So I want to lift the brow, but I don't want to drag it down. You don't want to close off the eye. Sometimes you can just wherever your hair is, bring it straight out. So your brow just comes and goes straight out, doesn't curve down, but you want to make sure that you are ending your brow. You want to have that full spectrum of the brow because that is going to make you a feel more confident, basically make you have that lifted eye framing out the face. So don't skimp on the eyebrows, ladies really work and figure out your eyebrow shape as you age. Speaking of hair, I have different colors of a brow fix. So I'm going to take my cocoa. I have a gray hair and it's really annoying because it comes and goes. And sometimes I have more than others, but I'm not taking them out obviously. So I just do a little brow fix in cocoa and I will glaze over them and it covers my gray because you want to keep as many gray hairs in your brows. Ladies, you do not start plucking your gray hairs out of your brow because then you're going to have less and less brow. Those gray hairs are going to keep coming. You can get them tinted. I used to do that, but I would say to my clients, you know what, have more control and feel like you can cover them for an event right away, or you don't have to come in to get them tinted. Just be more in control and have a brow fix. So you can just kind of get it done when you need to. So now brows 
curls are finished and you have a little technique to use, whether it's a stencil, whether it is going to be just getting the right brow pencil, right color. So now we're on to the skin. So a lot of times I see women making the mistake of just doing the under eye concealer where it is too light and it is in the wrong area. So I see a lot of women that do too light right underneath here, like this little moon. And then what happens is, is that it is almost like this is highlighted and then they put their foundation on. So this basically just doesn't look right with the skin. So you don't want to go too light and you don't want to just do like this moon underneath your eye because then you create like a demarcation. So I'm going to just take that off with my little all night pad and I'm going to show you how to do underneath the eye area. And it depends on really what you are dealing with. I happen to have more pigmentation underneath my eye. My skin gets very red very easily. As you can see, what I like to do is I like to address the issue with a color corrector. I don't find using a concealer as I age is going to be the right thing to do. I can use a concealer over if I feel like I need more coverage, but I really go in with a color corrector, like no redness. If I have redness in my skin, like basically like in these areas here, I usually have a lot of redness. So I will use my no redness beauty stick. So this is like a nice cream to a powder finish. And then when it comes to my under eye area, I get away with using just peachy. It's a color corrector. So again, just like with your eyes and having that dark pigmentation on your eyelids, you use a eye primer to help change that color, to lift that color. So if I'm trying to, you know, lift this color and I'm just using concealer, sometimes it will come through and it becomes more muddied. And I don't like that look. And I think it doesn't, it doesn't look good for me. So you can use uh, any type of brush that you want to. This is just our flat foundation <laughs> brush. I can go underneath and brighten this area with the just peachy. It's a peach color. So it's going to brighten. It's going to color correct. And I can just work this in to cover this redness here. It's almost like a mosaic pick and choose on your face, what you need to color correct and what, what issues you need to address. Like this redness in the morning. Sometimes I'm like, I don't like it. I love swiping on a little no redness and you'll see you don't have like green on your face. You're going to be doing a foundation, a BB cream, what have you. So I'll just take the just peachy bot on the stick. If I want to depending depending on really what's going on. I can use my finger if I want to, and really just lighten this eye area, take a brush so I can get right underneath those lashes, go up into this nose area that we always get that dark blue. We get those, you know, that gray look. So I'm lightening up like my skin. That is what is so important to give yourself that facelift, not just use a concealer and be like, why isn't it covering? Why is it looking gray? Why does it look so dark? That's what I would really always struggle with. I didn't like having that darkness when you're trying to lighten. So color corrector over 40 is going to be your best friend. It's going to completely dramatically change your skin and you will see it when you start using a color corrector. So the color corrector is on, you can see how it has changed my skin. So I have this lightness. I don't have that redness that was really prominent around my nose area. So I'm going to take a BB cream. This is going to be light and fair mixed together. This is a wonderful BB cream made for more mature skin with aloe, chamomile, ginseng. This is going to be very forgiving on the skin. This is something that I like doing because I feel that I don't want to cover my skin as I'm aging. And again, I said in one of my recent videos that I've been very lenient. <laughs> with my skin because it's not about covering up every single imperfection, every single, you know, pigmentation spot I have or what have you. It's just not, it's just not what I want to do. I don't feel like it looks good. I just mix the two together like this. I'm trying to keep it very simple for you ladies. So you can just enjoy looking pulled together, having some techniques that really work for you. This is going to hydrate your skin. This is going to give you that flawless finish, but not be, oh my gosh, so heavy, or I look like I just caked on all of this makeup. So I'm using my foundation buffing brush. I will go over my whole face with this and just give me a radiant glow. So that's going to be a really big difference when it comes to over 40, 50, 60, 70s is going a little bit lighter with your foundation changing to a BB cream because you are using a color corrector. So you are actually doing your skin a 
amazing service by being able to lift the color, which in turn makes you use less foundation, less covering up, less insecurity, because now you're doing a technique that actually works with you, with your skin and not against it. Again, when you're using concealer and it's your pigmentation is coming through, your darkness is coming through, what do you do? You put on more and then more and then powder and then more. And how, oh, how do I do this? And then it just is like, oh my gosh, I have so much makeup on. And then it's cakey and then it looks aging. You want to keep the skin fresh. You want to take care of your skin. I mean, I have a darker khaki color in my eyes, but it doesn't look like I put on a ton of makeup. Keep that eyeliner very, very tight on that line. Do a front loading of your lashes with the mascara. Do the double heated eyelash curler and the mechanical eyelash curler, getting that up and beautiful. These are just easy techniques. They're inexpensive. I mean, some of them don't even cost you any money. You just have to know how to apply product and know how to use the right formulations. BB cream is on. I'm gonna go in with something very, very simple, which is going to be cheeky. It's a cream blush. So wonderful for women over 40. A cream blush on the skin. I'm going to just press it into my, my finger and we want to lift the face, right? So you want to look at yourself in the mirror and find out where would you really blush or flush if you ran somewhere or you got heated or you had a hot flash. Like, where is that? Where is that naturally on your face? So for me, I'm going to go right here on my cheek where I smile, lifting it up. I'm not coming down. My face as I'm aging is getting more, you know, losing the volume. So I want to bring it up. I did see something that was been going around where they're putting blush underneath their eyes, ladies. I was like watching it in awe, like, what are you doing? literally putting blush on like it was just too much that is not the way we could go over 40 these are the younger girls so you can see bringing that color to the face this is one of the most important ways to be able to get a facelift so i'm going to just be putting this beautiful blush that's giving that really youthful feel to my skin to my my look that radiance bringing it up and it's interesting everybody has a different face shape so according to to me and bringing my face up and having it lifted with a cream blush. This is the way that I would do it. I would give myself a little contour. This is a Trish McAvoy um, little bronzing stick just right here, just right where your ear, the top of your ear goes straight down. And then I just blend it into the blush. So it looks really pretty. This is nothing that's like too dark or anything. It's creamy. So it's easy to work with. It's called fast track and I just work it up. So it's just kind of like underneath my cheekbone here, but going up into that beautiful blush that I just put on. So now we have, you know, a little bit of contour, a little bit of prettiness, and then we're gonna go right into lips. So with our lips, we want to define them just like our eyes. And that was another thing that kept coming up when I was watching all these different videos is that women over 50 on YouTube are telling you not to use lip liner. And I am like, oh my gosh, no, you have to use lip liner. As my aunt said in her fierce aging series, she's like, Nikki, my, my lip line is like turning white. Like I'm losing my lips. What's happening. So we want to put back that definition. We want to put back that color. It could be in a very soft pink. It could be in a nude. This is Whirl from Mac. I actually have my cameo that I like to use too. It's very similar. So whatever you have, but a nice neutral. So I'm going to line my lips. I will link my lip hack that I did to basically give you a powder your top lip. It's just a little technique that I, I have done forever and ever and ever. So we're going to line the lips and it's a way to make your lips powdier the way I did it in the lip trick. So when you are aging and you feel like you don't have a top lip, it just lifts it a little bit. So it's a great video to watch if you want a little trick to kind of just lift the lip, not a big deal, but I'm going to just line my lips like I naturally, like I normally do my natural lip line. A really great tip too, when it comes to your lip liner is don't take it all the way down to the corner because sometimes it will make your lips like they'll go down. So you might want to just stop a little bit shorter, just right before. So you're not taking it down because wherever you're lining, that's where the eyes going to be drawn to when someone's looking at you. So if you want to just stop a little bit, blend it in, you can do that. So it doesn't come down. You're still lifting the lips and then just do a nice soft nude or a pink something. This is pretty smart. It's one of my favorites, very fresh, very easy. And then I just love to take a little champs or I'll take a little Coco 13 and I will go over the top of my lip just to give it the extra boost. And then you have that freshness, that glossiness. You can just use a gloss if you want to, but you have a really pretty 
look to the skin. I wanted to use this khaki color so you could really see where I was placing the eyeshadow. Did a little bit of that sheen so you could see it and not be matte and be very neutral. But this is how just to really get those really great techniques over 40, honor your beauty, love your beauty, love doing all of this process, whether you do one thing or you do all of them, or you just try a color corrector, or you just try a BB cream. The sky is the limit when it comes to your beauty over 40, ladies, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It should be celebrated. It should be really mastered. This is the time you should be mastering your makeup and feeling like a rebel, like the eyeshadow palette I used. A rebel in the fact that you're not gonna fall into the same kind of, well, I'm 50, 60, and I'm not supposed to really take care of myself. I'm supposed to just kind of say, oh, I'm older, or it doesn't really matter. No, it does matter. All of this matters. It matters how you show up. And another thing that lifts my spirits, and I had said on my Instagram, I would show you, I happened to be on a little staycation. I went into the Louis Vuitton um, boutique, which is always a treat. I never get to go into those stores. I got the Rose Day vent vents. It smells so amazing. I've gotten so many compliments on this and it just, it just uplifts my spirits and it makes me feel absolutely beautiful. So ladies, until my next video, I'll see you later.